Okay, now let's look at this again, always repetition. And that's kind of the theme of this audio. If it's true that you got liberal versus conservative, and liberal is always about top down, and conservative is always about bottom up, because in the latter case, conservatism is predicated upon a recognition that man is no good so man within himself has to better himself then how is God doing that? Now if you don't believe in God you can just scrap the God question and just look at what do you want to call it? The facts. Because Godness is another fact that's like on top of or at the bottom of, however you want to put it, foundational to, the facts. But you got the facts, which is your middle data. What are the facts? Humankind that we know of started out, except for the Bible, you don't know this, so we have to just leave out the Bible part. Humankind started out being really crude. Okay, it wasn't strictly speaking a question of crude in the sense that he had to scratch the ground for his living. His mind was earthy too. Mankind throughout the centuries has displayed unbelievably barbaric cruelty and stupidity. And I don't see how anybody can argue any other way. You can, be call, you can call yourself an evolutionist, and especially if you do, you're going to have to make the argument that man started out at the bottom look like an animal. And today, as far as the espoused values, man is more sophisticated. I do not have to club you, and you do not have to club me in order to win an argument we can argue without having to resort to violence and we can even call each other names and it doesn't ever have to lead to violence it doesn't have to but in the old days there was no such thing in the old days when two people disagreed with each other there was a standard that you had to duel to the death that was a standard. If you hurt my family, somebody in my family, I would be honor bound by the standards of that day to hurt you the way you hurt my family. Actually worse. That is still a norm in Arabic society. Because it's Muslim. Muslim is backward. That is still a norm in pretty much all the so-called primitive societies on the planet. Okay? Now there are those who, you know, cut out half the Quran and say, well, Islam is not like that. Like Queen Rania of Jordan, who completely lies about the Quran and says that the violent verses in it are just like the Bible. No, they're not at all. But she's Muslim. What do you expect? She lies to protect her religion. That's her job as Queen of Jordan, to lie. And so she puts on this face of Islam as being very benevolent, very sophisticated, really very Christian. But she won't say that, of course. She can't afford to. She's got to make Islam look good. That's called takia in Arabic. And it means lying to make your religion look good. That's a standard in the Quran. That's a standard in Islam. That's its version of sophistication. Lying to make your position look good. Well, but that's pretty crass. That's pretty crude. Lying is a virtue. That's the way we lived 4,000 years ago. You lied, you cheated, you stole, you did whatever it was, and the only virtue in society was that you were, you stayed alive and you beat everybody, 
or you defended whatever was termed your family or tribe. No matter what it cost. No matter how nasty you had to be to the other guy. That was considered a virtue. Along comes the Mosaic Law and says, no, that's not a virtue. Justice is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Leviticus 19.18 To this day, that standard is not in the human race. In the human race, it's the opposite. In the human race, it's you help me, I help you. You hurt me, I hurt you. That's considered virtue in the world. To this day, even in our sophisticated 2016, and the guy who em emulates that really the best is Donald Trump. You hurt me, I hurt you. Ha ha ha. Well, anybody mature would call that childish. But anybody childish would call it mature and right. So that's why all the childish people support Donald Trump. You cannot be a mature human being and support Donald Trump. It's not possible. He represents the whole spectrum of the childishness, the crudity of the human race back in the beginning, except that it is 2016 and now we have more advanced technological tools to express our crude childishness. So look at that. For all of mankind's sophistication today, he's really not gotten out of the mire. M-I-R-E. M-I-R-E, Meyer, is um, a euphemism for shit. It's a mixture of dirt and shit. That's what Meyer is. That's the English definition of the term. You might not find it in English dictionaries today because we paper over our crudeness that remains with more sophisticated words like Meyer instead of shit. It means muddy, wet mixture of shit and dirt. Specifically clay. That's mankind. But we have more sophisticated tools. And one of the beneficial results of those sophisticated tools is that you and I do not need to club each other in order to have discourse and disagree and have an argument. We used to have to do that. So standards other than man's animalistic crudeness are now prevalent in the human race. Through repetition. The repetition of clubbing each other. We finally got tired of doing that. It's expensive. It hurts. Everybody dies eventually from it. So can we find some other way to fight each other than clubbing each other? That's basically what happened. The so-called advancement of the human race is really because we tried the native human clubbing each other method first to win our points, to get ahead, to beat the other guy, to be happy, which of course we never were. And guess what? We got tired of it. You tire out when you keep trying to do something that doesn't work. And then in your weakness, weakness, you seek other solutions. Because you're too weak and too tired to do what you had been doing. That's really what's going on now. The only reason we're not at physical war clubbing each other is we're too tired to do it. And by the way, it didn't work, and some of us over time, aggregating, more and more and more and more and more of us are realizing, oh, it doesn't work to club your neighbor to death. Let's try talking. Yeah, okay. And now we talk each other to death. Still doesn't work. And then we get tired of talking, so we resort to fighting. And you can fight in all kinds of different ways, just like Von Clausewitz said. Politics is war carried on by other means. Yeah. Politics is what? Talking. 
grabbing alleged power, and then what? Establishing a bunch of rules. Okay, but see, people have to be already too tired to fight in order to obey the rules. If I can fight you, then I don't have to obey the rules. If I think I can't fight you, then I'll fight the rules by talking about them, talking them down, saying how bad they are. Or I'll just give in and then surreptitiously find some other way to do what I wanted anyhow. That's, that's, that's right there, human society. I don't care if you're talking parents to kids, or if you're talking adults to adults, or nation to nation. That's what we're all doing. Economics is a method of fighting. You can do it passively, and you can do it, you know, overtly. You have to fight your body every day just to get up and go to work. And some days, you're too tired to do that fight. So you call in sick or something. So you'll notice that even when we say, Oh, this is good, this is right, this is true, and we talk, 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 rather than club each other, we're still fighting by other means. Now, that progressive tiring out that leads to other forms of fighting that leads to, as it were, more um, understanding and other methods of trying to resolve problems, that's been a progressive historical thing in the human race writ large. We're all warring right now, but not the way we used to. I'll get in comments, you'll get in comments, you'll find somebody whose position you recognize is totally crazy, and you fight with them with what? Your words. And they fight back with you. And maybe every once in a while, somebody will come along and agree with you, and oh, look at how refreshing that is. But most of the time, you're, you might as well be talking to a wall. Ben Carson even brought that up in the debates. I want to say it was like the sixth debate, but it might have been earlier. He said, have you looked at the comments and articles, meaning online? He says, everybody's fighting with each other. When did we become so nasty? We've always been that nasty. That's what he's not recognizing. What he should have said is, when did we start to become so honest? And that's really a good thing. And that's one of the good things about Trump. He's honest, he's a jerk, and he's honest. But he's honest, so now there's more honest debate. And yeah, it's more fighting without any kind of compromise, without any kind of resolution. But it's honest. So you see, the thing that's good about it, the disruptiveness of it, is also what's bad about it, the disruptiveness of it. If you can fight by talking and you can get to a resolution of some kind, even if it's only to get it off your chest, that's better than having to club the other guy. Less effort, less time, less cost, same satisfaction. Because when you club the other guy to death, then five other guys are going to have to club you to death. That's what we learned in history. Now think about this from God's perspective. The human race has to fight its way out of the mire. God is the God of freedom. God says truth, be free. So over centuries it's taken. That's how stupid we are. Over the centuries, we fight one way and we tire out. So we fight another way and we tire out. We fight another way and we tire out. And we fight another way and we tire out. Meanwhile, we're actually learning something. So no matter what you say is your approach to politics or government, liberal or conservative, in any event, you're fighting. So God is using the human race's own flaw of wanting to rebel and fight, which is, you know, 
what happened, what got set into our biology. The minute the woman took the fruit and Adam took it from her, that's Romans 5.12. In our biology, we have this need to rebel against truth, a need to rebel against God, a need to rebel against authority, a need to rebel against, you know, the exigencies of life. Yeah. And God uses that to advance your understanding. But it's very slow. And look at the results over the centuries. I do not need to club you. You do not need to club me. If you and I fight in words and we end up still not agreeing, we'll call each other names and eventually tire out and just walk away. I don't have to beat you up. You don't have to beat me up. You get it off your chest. I get it off my chest. We walk away. We're both alive. We're both still in the economy doing whatever it is we do. And we learn something. What do we learn? Fighting is pointless. And yet necessary. Isn't that what we're really learning? You fight and fight and fight and fight and nothing happens. That's why my avatar, you know, in the internet is Sisyphus rolling the rock up the hill. Sisyphus was a Greek myth story about a guy who got punished by the gods for whatever it was he did wrong, I don't remember. And the punishment to the gods was that he'd have this big boulder, that he'd have this terrific need to push it all the way up some hill, and then he no sooner gets to the top, then he feels the need to push it all the way down. Then he gets to the bottom and he's got to push it up again. And that was his eternal punishment, to keep rolling this boulder up and down, up and down, up and down a hill. But that's what we're doing. We think, oh, once I get to the top of the hill, it'll be fine. And it's not. And then we have to roll it down. And then we think, oh, I get to the bottom of the hill, it will be fine. But it's not. And what do we learn then? That it's pointless to fight. But we can't stop fighting. But we do change the way we fight. And in the process, learn something. So the human race today is spending most of its time fighting by other means that end up being a whole lot more productive. It's more productive if I don't have to club you to death. Because then you're still alive to do your production, I'm still alive to do my production, and yes, all of our production is rolling a stone up and down a hill, but we learn something in the process. Both of us still alive. You don't have to club me to death. I don't have to club you to death. I walk away from the argument thinking I won. You walk away from the argument thinking you won. And actually we both did win because we learned something. And what did we learn? Am I trying to change your mind? Or are you trying to change my mind? Doesn't do any good at all. So when I fight, when you fight, who are you really fighting? Yourself. What good got done? You learned something. So you won the fight. I won the fight. We walk away in a supposed stalemate, but we both won. The human race is not busy beating each other up like we did 4,000 years ago. Every once in a while, you know, we can't take it anymore, so we fight with each other, but that's too much effort, and we soon stop. But, for those who are more primitive among us, who haven't learned that lesson yet, a.k.a. the Muslims, we all are joining to fight against them. Even though we want to fight with each other, we got somebody who's more primitive than we still are, and we fight against them. And then what, what do we learn? We learn to like each other. This is the way it's been working in history. You and I would normally be fighting against each other, but there's somebody even more primitive than us, so you and I, instead of fighting each other, band together, fight the other guy, and then when the other guy is defeated, then we go back to fighting each other. But when we go back to fighting each other, it's less. Because we remember for a short time. 
that we were once allies. So we don't want to fight each other as much. So the desire to fight and fight and fight gets tired out, reduces. And the desire to find other solutions than that other fighting increases. Now what's the point of all this? In eternity it's going to be the same way. Except we're all fighting for a common goal. For everybody to learn a little bit more. You fight yourself, you fight others, but not really against them, fighting for them by fighting them. This is how God does it with us. He's fighting for you by fighting against you. And sooner or later, if you mature in Christ, you get to the same position. Now, the liberal versus conservative fighting that's going on actually ends up having that same result. So you can't say, well, I wish everybody was conservative. No. Because if all you had was conservatives, then they would, how do you want to call it, they would actually go down. They would become more animalistic. Because that's the other problem with fighting the other guy. If I fight you and club you to death, then I'm going to tell myself I'm right and you're wrong. And I won't learn from the fight. If you club me to death, then you're going to tell yourself your position is right and I'm wrong and you won't learn. Because none of us are 100% right. So that's why the fight has to be kept alive. That's why the fight goes on forever. That's why this whole business of truth be free is a fight. If it's free, it's fight. Fight and free. They're two sides of a coin. So you need the guy who's against you to be alive for that reason too. Isn't this ironic? So, yeah, the conservatives in history are right because they're basing their position on history, which the fact is that man is no good. Okay, so if he's no good, then he's got to fight. If he's no good, he already wants to fight. So then you turn the fight on its head and have the same fight benefit mankind. That's the way God designed it. If you don't believe in God, still the facts are that when man fights... He either tires out or improves. So to stop the fight is to stop the improvement. And that's another reason why liberalism is wrong. But what's bad about liberalism is what's good about liberalism. It's constantly fighting the conservative. Liberalism wants a top-down government benevolent answer. Liberalism wants really a, a Satan. Satan's whole idea of governing the human race and angels is top-down. That's what liberalism is. It's Satan's plan. Okay, but Satan's plan is needed. Isn't that interesting? Satan's plan is needed, too. Hell goes on forever. Too. So whether you believe in no God or you believe in any God, you still got the same answer. So you can't just say, okay, well, the conservatives are right, so then we got to defeat liberalism. No, you fight against it, but you don't want to defeat it. Because liberalism is what holds the conservatives' feet to their fire. Because if the conservatives truly won then they would slide down too. If the liberals win, they slide down. If the conservatives win, they slide down. So really what you want is deadlock. And that's a real important thing to understand. Because the big argument back in the 1990s was, oh, all we ever had was deadlock. Congress never achieved anything. And then the Republicans decided, okay, we're not going to be, you know, stupid anymore. We're going to cave in to our Democratic president. 
And now the argument is, you shouldn't have caved into the Democratic president. You should have been living up to true conservative ideals. Okay, then let's go back to deadlock. Always the balance, one against the other. Because the actual learning, the actual progress is in the fight, not in the victory. That's ironic, huh? 